I'm Bill McWilliam, president of Cascadero Copper, CCD on the TSX Venture Exchange. Cesium is one of the world's rarest metals with a growing industrial demand. Drilling is underway on our Tehran property in Argentina to prove up a cesium resource. Cascadero's patent pending leach process has the potential to make Cascadero the lowest cost supplier of cesium in the world. Visit our website, cascadero.com or phone us at 604-924-5504. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Hilliard Macbeth, author of the book, When the Bubble Bursts, Surviving the Canadian Real Estate Crash. He's also a portfolio manager and financial advisor in Edmonton. Welcome back to the show, Hilliard. Nice to be on the show. For the first time in seven years, the Bank of Canada has upped its rate. What kind of an impact is that going to have on the average Canadian? Well, you know, it remains to be seen, but I'm 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 concerned. You know, I, I think it might be a mistake. I read the uh, full release of the monetary policy report uh, just uh, an hour ago, and they um, they seem to be focusing on the fact that the economy is pr- improving. The, they, they look really a lot at what they call the slack and output in the economy, so how much capacity is there, and that, that sort of factories plus people. And uh, However, they seem to be ignoring the impact that interest rates will have on the housing sector, and the housing sector is much, much bigger than the last time they raised rates. It's been so long since they raised rates, seven years, that uh, the housing bubble has progressed uh, exponentially since then. So... We don't know how much impact it's going to have, but certainly the debts overall in, in, in the Canadian households have been growing at 7.5% a year, so in seven years that's over 50% more debt in the, in the uh, private sector in Canada. So it's bound to have a bigger impact, and I suspect, I have no way of knowing this, I, I doubt that the Bank of Canada even knows this, um, I don't think their models uh, include the proper variables that would tell them how much of an impact it'll have. And and even, and even more, uh, I read the report and it, it mentions housing. Housing is one of the, as, as, as you and I have talked about before, housing is one of the biggest sectors of the economy, 8% of GDP. And uh, they, they mentioned it, but they did not um, allow for any uh, decline in the housing sector. In fact, they even um, improved their outlook for housing, which which makes no sense. So uh, it's it's a real puzzle. I think they must have felt that the 50 basis points that they they cut during the Alberta oil oil and gas led recession a couple of years ago, the so-called insurance that Governor Pelos talked about, they felt it was time they had to remove that. So I, they uh, they cut they increased 25 basis points and and to make it even worse they. Um, they gave what's called a hawkish statement, which means they forecast another increase. So um, it's, it was about the worst possible, if you're thinking of, of uh, rising rates as being a bad thing, it's about the worst possible uh, statement we could have gotten. Well, I've heard numbers that, for example, on a $750,000 mortgage, you're looking at another $83 a month and perhaps more. Yeah, you know, it's, it's that and... Uh, and you know, the, you probably saw that study that came out last week that said seventy-seven um, percent of Canadians could not handle a, and it was some ridiculously, uh, you know, a certain increase in their in their monthly uh, costs. I think it was uh, like a hundred and thirty dollars, or maybe it was three hundred dollars, or something like that. The seventy-seven percent of Canadians cannot handle such an increase, and uh, so this this would go a long way, but towards that, uh, putting those people into trouble. But on top of that, and this is where the housing uh, comes in, because all of the GDP that is attributed to housing directly comes from renovation, new construction, and the cost of selling and buying, basically real estate commissions mostly. And so if people don't qualify for the loans on the mortgages because the rates have gone up, it, it, a small increase like this, plus the the change in the rules of CMHC in December, and then some more rules that were announced just uh, in the last week. Uh, you know, there could be a significant number of fewer people qualifying, 
for new financing, and that's where all of the GDP activity, well, m most of it comes from. Um, I guess the renovation part, it could be that people have the money, but I suspect the renovation people are borrowing the money on the HELOC anyway. So uh, it's a it's likely to be a damper on the on the um, on the household uh, investment sector, the household construction sector, and it doesn't look from reading the report all the way through that the bank account has allowed for any decline in the housing sector, which is which is kind of surprising. We'll have more with Hilliard Macbeth right after the break. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa, located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. Lotus Ventures Inc. is a BC-based medical marijuana company poised to launch into the rapidly evolving cannabis sector. Lotus is in the final review stage of the Health Canada approvals to become a licensed producer, having arranged facility financing of up to $12 million, plus building permits for its prototype indoor production facility. Shares trade under the symbol J on the Canadian Securities Exchange. Visit our website at lotusventures.ca. Welcome back. We're speaking with Hilliard Macbeth. Hilliard, another factor perhaps that the Bank of Canada hasn't looked at is the annual housing uh, assessments are going out to people now, and everything's behind by a year, so the house price that you have to pay tax on may not be even the value of your house today. Yeah, well, especially in Toronto. They, the um, It looks like the prices peaked in April in Toronto, although it doesn't show the the Terranet index was released today and the, and the prices were still going up. But that's, as we've talked about before, there's a big uh, lag of three or four months in that in that uh, index because they wait till the the sale is registered at land titles. But there's, there's definitely uh, evidence of a, a serious slowdown in Toronto, the biggest housing markets, Vancouver being the second biggest, of course. Um, and the way and the way we know that is just since July the 1st, in the greater Golden Horseshoe area, there's almost 2,000 more houses for sale in the million-plus category. And since April 1st, when the prices appear to have peaked, there's something like 7,000 new homes for sale in the million-plus category. And the thing that bugs me about that is um, there actually are very few people in society uh, that can afford a million-dollar home. And the few people that can afford a million-dollar home, those that are in that position, whether by income or assets or whatever, they already own one or two homes, or even three in some cases. So so the problem with all these million-dollar homes for sale is um, the people that could buy them uh, probably have to sell an existing home in order to be able to buy that home. So if on top of that the... Uh, the banks start to tighten up, uh, which is inevitable, I think, with the uh, increase in interest rates. It's a uh, it's a double triple whammy. That uh, well, I guess I guess the positive side will be we'll finally uh, get rid of this crazy housing bubble and get some affordable housing prices back in back in focus. But the getting from here to there is going to be painful. What about people who have uh, taken out home equity loans? How is this going to affect that business? Well, I wondered. I talked to uh, one person already, and uh, just uh, just anecdotally, he was, uh, or maybe he emailed me to ask me, uh, should I convert the HELOC into a mortgage? Because um, you know the disadvantage of a HELOC is rates are floating, and uh, if rates rise, if you can't pay that HELOC off, then you're stuck. Whereas a mortgage, he could lock in a five-year rate. So. Um, I think some people might be thinking of doing that, although the disadvantage of doing that is then you have to make um, principal payments as well as interest payments. So the beautiful thing about HELOCs, I've got one myself, is you only make interest payments. But uh, there's been a huge growth in HELOCs uh, in the last uh, 10 years, since the last time rates were raised. And uh, nobody knows. I, I, I think this is entirely uncharted territories. I don't think anybody... They've never raised rates before, when debt levels have been this high. It's never happened before. The, the last time I started in the mid-70s, and when rates went up in 1979, 80, 81, 82, 
peaking out at uh, you know 19% in probably 1982, I think. Um, there wasn't that much debt in society because people couldn't qualify for very much debt. You know, if you had a $50,000 income in the family, you maybe could qualify for a maximum of $100,000 in debt when interest rates are that high. So it did hurt when interest rates went up, but the total amount of debt as a percentage of GDP was much, much smaller. So this has never really been tried before. This is brand new stuff, and uh, I, uh, I think we do have to do something to get the household debt down. And uh, I suspect the Bank of Canada felt they had to do it. Uh, but I'm not sure that they understand all the consequences of doing it. Well, we're talking about mortgage rates. What about things like credit cards? Are they going to boost their interest rates? Well, for sure. And, 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 that, and that, that hits people even harder uh, because there's a lot of people, I'm told, um, that I've always paid off my credit card balances every month, except maybe for a couple of times I couldn't. But... Um, there's obviously a lot of people that just pay the minimum payment every month, and that's where the interest rates go up really dramatically because uh, it's interest upon interest. and So even a small increase in interest rates on credit cards would have a big impact. Now, you know, I think that a lot of people on credit cards maybe are already at the 19.5% level, so maybe the maybe the bank account rate won't affect them much initially. But in the long run, the consumer finance people, it's not really my area, but I've, I've, I've listened to several of them in the last couple of days, and they all say the same thing, which is it's going to have a dramatic impact on those people. And those are the people that are most vulnerable, too, because they carry a very large debt load. So uh, it's, it's, it's a terrible uh, corner that everybody's backed into here. And um, the, uh, the one good thing, I guess it could be good or bad, but the one good thing out of all this is the Canadian dollar. Uh, for people that travel... And people that are buying, um, you know, foreign foreign goods, um, the Canadian dollar has gone up a full percentage point today on Wednesday. So it's uh, 77, 78 cents, somewhere in that range. So it makes it a, a lot easier to take that trip to um, Disneyland or Mexico or Hawaii. We'll have more with Hilliard Macbeth right after this. I'm Brian Fowler, president of Blind Creek Resources Limited, listed on the TSX Venture Exchange, ticker symbol BCK. Blind Creek is focused in the Yukon, Northwest Territories, and British Columbia. The company's key property is the Blend Project, one of the largest undeveloped lead-zinc silver deposits in Western Canada, plus plans to advance the recently acquired, fully permitted historic engineer gold mine in the Atlan District of Northwestern BC. Check us out at blindcreekresources.com. Keep informed. Receive our weekly recap of thought-provoking articles, podcasts, and radio delivered to your inbox for free. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage, HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're chatting with Hilliard Macbeth. Hilliard, yes, uh, the loony did go up. It's a 14-month high, I think, for the Canadian dollar. It will make it easier to purchase things like vegetables and fruits in the wintertime because we import them all. But what about Canadian business trying to sell overseas if the loony keeps rising with anticipated even higher interest rates? Well, exactly. That that's another uh, you know one of the the two factors that the bank counter said that uh, caused them to have confidence in the in the uh, in the recovering economy, which allows them to raise interest rates, was export led growth and business investment. And um, so, what you're talking about is export led growth. And uh, Canada is not particularly cost competitive, especially with the southern U.S. states when it comes to things like auto parts and auto sales, auto manufacturing. Um, our costs are generally quite a bit higher in Canada. We used to be able to to um, get away with it with a low dollar and our health care costs being included, but that isn't um, enough anymore. So we're losing a lot of the new, we're basically losing all of the new production uh, investment decisions to uh, Mexico and southern U.S. And the rising uh, loony is not going to, is just going to make that worse. So, and on the business investment side, that's an interesting question because um, a lot of the business investment is probably related to the real estate. You know, so there's there's the consumer that buys the condo unit and the, and the house, but so there's also people that invest in the in the housing industry. And if there's a slowdown there, then there'll be a slowdown in business investment. So the um, the, the uh, big 
opportunity, of course, is for business investment is in export type oriented industries. And um, the higher loony is not going to help. It's going to hurt that. So all in all, I would say that um, the Bank Canada is really playing with fire with this raising rates at this time. And there wasn't the, – the weird thing about it is there's no real pressure because inflation is very much under control. And, and uh, as you know, the Bank of Canada really just has one mandate. It, it's supposed to protect the value of the currency and keep inflation under control. So they seem to have um, – they seem to be succeeding on that level, and they didn't really need to do anything, but probably because they felt that um, the housing bubble was getting out of control, uh, they uh, they thought they had to make a move. Well, the elites who make these decisions obviously don't live on the threshold where, you know, we're told most Canadians would be on the street if they lost two paychecks and didn't have something to replace it right away. Yeah, you know, the... Um, when I was in a graduate school in economics, the, the, the joke was, an economist is somebody who's never actually met a person but had one described to them. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, I guess it's not funny what we're talking about here, but it is true. I don't, you know, that the mathematical, the econometric models, which are all math, very advanced mathematics, they don't really show in there any of the impact that it might have on somebody that's got um, credit cards maxed out and a home loan bigger than what they should have, and maybe at work has been told that all overtime is canceled and is worried about their job. And uh, so that that part of it just uh, doesn't make it up into those rarefied atmospheres at the Bank of Canada, unfortunately. What about uh, now, of course, Stats Canada tells us there's more seniors in Canada than uh, young people. If the seniors are on fixed incomes, would higher interest rates be a help for them to actually make more than eight cents on their savings account? I think that's right. I think that uh, by and large, the uh, in general sense, the uh, the seniors have you know way more savings than the young. Basically, on, on average, the young people have zero savings. Uh, they mostly have student loans, and if they're you know whatever, they've got debts. So, uh, rising interest rates a transfer from the indebted people to the people that have um, surplus savings, which is generally older people. So it's, uh, it's in, and, and you know, the problem with that is that uh, the people that spend all the money are the younger people and the older people are sitting on huge bank accounts complaining uh, bitterly about uh, how low the interest rates are. Um, they generally don't spend as much money anymore. They start to spend less and less as they get older. So it's not a positive for the economy, and uh, it's um, it will help those older people living on fixed income, though. But I, but you know, an interesting thing I learned from a bankruptcy trustee in Ontario recently is that the fastest growing uh, segment of Canadians that are declaring personal bankruptcy are seniors. Now, it's still smaller than the, still they still are a smaller segment than the younger people are declaring bankruptcy, but. The increase is is the most rapid among the seniors, and I asked I asked why, and he said, "Well, two things: they're trying to maintain their lifestyle, even though they can't afford to live that way in retirement any longer, and uh, number two, they're helping their kids too much. They're helping their kids buy houses and all kinds of stuff. So it's uh, it's going to be a very challenging time. Uh, it was inevitable, though, and you know I certainly um, talked about this in my book." But uh, now that it seems to be here, it is uh, pretty sobering thinking about how how difficult it's going to be for many people. Hilliard, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you, Jim, and I hope you're uh, hope you you get your voice back soon, and and hope you're feeling better. Yes, I haven't been singing any opera lately, but perhaps. Okay. <laughs> My guest has been Hilliard Macbeth, author of the book When the Bubble Burst, Surviving the Canadian Real Estate Crash. His website, macbethgroup.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Any questions for the show can be emailed to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com Radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.